Good morning. And a warm welcome to our, this morning to our service from Cock Pen in Carrington, to all those in church and to all those watching the recording later on. You are all most welcome. Now, Liz has some intimations for us. Just a few. Can I just read a card first? Um, it's from Anne Dixon, who says, Dear Liz, very many thanks for the lovely flowers you sent via Wilma. They are still looking fresh and have been admired by my visitors from Germany, and I so, so much appreciate them. Thank you again and for your kind thoughts, and take care, Anne Dixon. It's oh, another satisfied customer. And um, can I just bring to your attention, next week in our hall, um, there's another maker's market. You may recall that there was a lady running um, the maker's market. I think we had four of them in the hall last year, um, which is it's quite an upmarket thing. It's, it's not like our homemade stalls and we knitted things in that. It's all good, but a great selection of things and well worth a visit, I could say. And, but it's, so I bring your attention to it next Sunday, the 28th, in the hall from 10 to 3. So that's not to say you've not to come to church. You've got plenty of time after it. <laughs> so you can go up after it. And uh, just to remind everyone once again, <coughs> the articles for the Harvest Edition of the Link magazine should be with the editors uh, by Sunday, the 4th of August, at the latest, earlier if possible. And finally, in the Midlothian and Borders Church's praise evening at Lonehead Parish Church, is on Sunday, the 11th of August, at 7 p.m., how However, there's a barbecue before it at 6 p.m. And so, as I say, the, oh, the speaker is going to be Fraser Edwards from Inner Leiden, Traquair and Walkerburn. Um, so there's a barbecue there if you want to join in at 6 o'clock or at 7 o'clock for the praise evening. But could I just say that if anybody intends going, could they let me know? But, uh, I'm especially talking about the barbecue part. It's for their catering. So that's the 11th of August at 7 p.m. Thank you. Let us take a few moments to be still as we come to worship. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 33, verses 20 to 22. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Let us worship God together this morning in our opening hymn of praise, O Thou My Soul, Bless God the Lord.
Let us worship God together in our opening prayer this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts full of adoration, for you are God who knows us intimately, the one who sees our struggles and our joys. We praise you for your wisdom, your love, and your mighty works. We come with glad thanksgiving for the many expressions of your love, your mighty deeds and your everyday blessings, the beauty of the earth and the vastness of the heavens, the rich variety of life and the love that surrounds and encircles us each day. Yet, Lord, we confess our shortcomings. For the times we are blind to all you give, failing to see you or appreciate your goodness. For the times we are unmoved by your presence, when we sometimes allow doubt and unbelief to cast shadows over our hearts. For the times we prioritize urgent matters over eternal truths. Forgive us, Lord, and help us change our attitudes. Cleanse and renew us, we pray, that we might recognize that keeping our eyes on you is the most important thing in life. For your spirit lifts us, your face blesses us, and your mercy heals us. Strengthen our faith, guide us into all truth, and help us love you with all our hearts. We ask all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join to sing our next hymn, <clears throat> hymn 509, Jesus Calls Us O'er the Tumult.
Today's reading is from the second book of Samuel. Samuel 7, 1 to 14. Nathan's message to David. King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord kept him safe from all his enemies. Then the king says to the prophet Nathan, Here I am, living in a house built of cedar, but God's covenant box is kept in a tent. Nathan answered, Do whatever you have in mind, because the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord says to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David that I say to him, You are not the one to build the temple for me to live in. From the time I rescued the people of Israel from Egypt until now, I have never lived in a temple. I have travelled around living in a tent. In all of my travelling with the people of Israel, I have never asked any of the leaders that I appointed why they had not built me a temple made of cedar. So tell my servant David that I, the Lord Almighty, say to him, I took you from looking after sheep in the fields and made you the ruler of of my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have defeated all your enemies as you had advanced. I will make you as famous as the greatest leaders in the world. I have chosen a place for my people, Israel, and I have settled them there. Where will they live without being oppressed anymore? Ever since they entered this land, they have been attacked by violent people, but this will not happen again. I promise to keep you safe from all your enemies and give your descendants, when you, when you die and are buried with your ancestors, I will make one of your sons king and will keep his kingdom strong. He will be the one to build the temple for me, and I will make sure that his dynasty continues forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. The second reading is from the Gospel of St. Mark. Mark 6, 30-34, 53-56. Jesus feeds a great crowd. The apostles returned and met with Jesus and told them they had all, they had all done and taught. There were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his disciples didn't even have time to eat. So he says to them, Let us go off by ourselves to some place where we will be alone and you can rest for a while. So they started out in a boat by themselves for a lonely place. Many people, however, saw them leave and knew at once who they were. So they went from all the towns and ran ahead by land and arrived at the place of Jesus and his disciples. When Jesus got out of the boat, he saw this large crowd and his heart was filled with pity for them. Because they, like sheep, they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. Jesus heals the sick in Genesary. They crossed the lake and came to the land of Genesary, where they tied up the boat. As they left the boat, the people recognised Jesus at once. So they ran throughout the whole region. And wherever they heard he was, they brought to him sick people lying on their mats. And everywhere Jesus went, to villages, towns or farms, people would take those who were ill to the marketplaces and beg him to let them at least touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were made well. Amen. Thank you very much, Brian. Let us join to sing again hymn 601, Look Upon Us, Blessed Lord.
is it that our world seems to be spinning faster and faster with every passing year, and that our lives just seem to get busier and busier, and then that even with all of the progress we have made, we seem to have less time than ever. As you know, many of our modern inventions were created to give us more time. Dishwashers, for example, washing machines, microwaves, cars and mobile phones. These are great inventions and I am thankful to have them. But they are supposed to help us to do more in less time. So why is it that we seem to have less free time than ever before? There are lots of smart people thinking about this question and they are doing some fascinating, important work. And these are no easy, but there are no easy answers. The COVID-19 pandemic seemed to slow the world down for a little while, and now it is speeding up again. And with that in mind, this seems to be a good time to focus on the invitation that Jesus offers in today's gospel reading to his disciples, to come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. The disciples had come back from their first mission trip and they were excited and they gathered round Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. They were healing the sick and casting out unclean spirits and proclaiming the gospel. The demanding crowd were so insistent that they had no time even to eat. Is this not a description of the lives of many people today? Too busy to pause for a real lunch, young professionals munch on vending machine fare while working at their desks, teens grab a bagel for breakfast on the way out the door to school, parents and children drive through a succession of fast food restaurants between after school lessons and sports activities. Commuters sip double lattes on the early morning drive, gnaw on baby carrots between meetings, and pick up takeaways on the way home. Toddlers graze on cereal pieces and other portable finger foods so that meal schedules need not control the timing of family shopping trips. Our busyness prevents us from gathering for family meals and we may even forget that we enjoy stopping to eat together, especially when we find pleasure and fulfilment in many of the other activities that make up our day. The disciples were ready to do more, to build on their success, but Jesus responded to their enthusiasm with this invitation to come with him to a deserted place on the other side of the lake that they might have peace and rest for a while. Jesus knew that this rest was the most important thing that his disciples needed most. They have done important work and now it was time to rest. Here we see what might be called the rhythm of the Christian life. For the Christian life is a continuous life going into the presence of God from the presence of men and coming out into the presence of men from the presence of God. It's like the rhythm of sleep and work. We cannot work unless we have our time of rest and sleep will not come unless we have worked until we are tired. It may, be well, it may well be that the whole trouble in our lives is that we give God no opportunity to speak to us because we do not know how to be still and to listen. But the rest which Jesus sought for himself and for his disciples was not to be. The crowd saw Jesus and his disciples going away. At this particular place, it was four miles across the lake by boat and 10 miles round the top of the lake on foot. On a windless day, or with a contrary wind, a boat might take some time to make the passage, and an energetic person could walk round the top of the lake 
and be there before the boat arrived. That is exactly what happened. And when Jesus and his men stepped out of the boat, the very crowd from which they had sought some little peace was there waiting for them. Any ordinary man would have been intensely annoyed. The rest Jesus so much desired and which he had so well earned was denied to him. His privacy was invaded. Any ordinary person would have resented it. But Jesus was moved with pity at the pathos of the crowd. He looked at them. They were so desperately in earnest, they wanted so much what he alone could give them. To him he had compassion on them, as they were like sheep who had no shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The rest led to the mission. The word compassion doesn't really do justice to Jesus' reaction when he saw the crowds on the shore. It could have been a gut-wrenching experience for him, or possibly even that Jesus' heart broke for the people he saw. However, we might try to describe it, when Jesus saw the crowd of people, something moved deep inside him that made him want to help them. A lot has changed in the world in 2,000 years, but the human condition is still pretty much the same. Most of us have something we're struggling with in life, and we tend to tell ourselves that we'll be fine if we just try a little bit harder, do a bit more, or work a bit smarter. The great myths of our postmodern culture is that if we could just find our way through the mess, or if we could just be mindful of where we are, then we'll be okay. That sounds a lot like sheep without a shepherd to me. We're all doing our own thing, going our own ways, looking for greener grass to somehow make life better, more complete, more peaceful, or more of a something than it is right now. I wonder if Jesus still looks at us, sees us in our existential, wandering like sheep without a shepherd, and if his stomach still turns with compassion for us. What surprises me about this story is what Jesus did to help the people he saw. When people are moved with compassion, we might expect them to make a financial donation to a worthy charity, cook someone a meal, or do something else just as practical. Jesus didn't do any of these. Instead, moved with compassion towards this crowd of people, he began to teach them. I wonder exactly what Jesus said to the crowd that day. All we can really do is guess, based on what Jesus had already been teaching in Mark's Gospel. Maybe he taught them about the Kingdom of God, which comes to us in the most unexpected of ways, making the first last and the last first. Maybe Jesus taught about the presence of God, not with the rich or the powerful or the beautiful, but with the humble the poor and the needy. Maybe he taught them to find grace and peace and rest in his presence with them, instead of the constant pursuit of doing more, doing better, or doing anything. Maybe he taught them that heaven isn't just a nice place we go when we die, but is, it is the reality we live in now through faith in a truly present and perfectly loving God. Maybe Jesus taught them that the kingdom of God isn't out there somewhere, but it's here, made real, in all the flaws and imperfections and struggles and shortcomings of a community of believers who are gathered by the Holy Spirit as the living, breathing body of the living Christ in the world. And maybe he taught them to turn away from trying to work things out for ourselves and to turn to him 
to trust in him as the one who has everything we need for life in this world and the next. What if Jesus wants to teach us this new way of life, the way that he taught that crowd all these years ago? Because listening to the teachings of Jesus and trusting them to the point where we live like they're true can really make a difference to our lives. At the end of a long day or a busy week, it's easy to see people who want more from us as a nuisance or a bother. Our natural reaction can be to tell people to leave us alone, to look for some me time, or to want to hide until it all goes away. What if we were able to see each other as Jesus sees us, as sheep without a shepherd, as people who have good intentions but really no clear idea of where we're going or what we're doing, and to find compassion for each other. Whatever is happening in our lives, this story tells me that Jesus looks at each of us with gut-wrenching compassion and he teaches us a better way of life. Maybe we need to stop for a bit, recognise that for our best efforts, we're all a little lost and listen with fresh ears to the teaching of Jesus. Amen. We join to sing again hymn number 348, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. Now take up the offering.
God, as we bring our offerings before you, we ask for your guidance in fine-tuning our faith. Help us to trust you more deeply, to step out in faith and to follow where you lead. May our givings here today and by other means be an expression of our growing faith in you. Amen. Now let's pray for ourselves and others. Gracious God, as we journey through July and summer is upon us and rumours of sunshine prove to be doubtful, we give thanks for the life-given blaze of the sun pouring over the world, bringing warmth and growth and well-being. But we pray also for people in countries where the sun is so hot and water is so short that the temperatures are life-threatening. As climate change makes the problem worse, we pray for our sustained progress towards carbon reduction across the globe. May this not be the generation that ducks the crisis, but the one that begins to solve it. Our schools are out and our children are released to make the most of summer with their friends. We recognise the importance of social media to younger generation in particular and pray that while claiming the benefits of an online world, they may be kept from unhealthy addiction to it. Help them to sustain healthy relationships and be resilient in the face of cyberbullying. At this time, for some, hearts are heavy and heads hang down. Encourage those who are facing hard times, difficult decisions, problematic relationships or uncertain health. Touch their lives with hope and assure them that nothing can separate them from your love. In church, summer activities and programmes slow down May this slowing down be a gift to us all. Help us to refocus on you at the centre of everything we enjoy. You can come in you who came in Christ that we might have life and have it abundantly. Remind us why we come to church so that we love both you and our neighbour more fully. We acknowledge that our church faces change and challenges. And so we pray for guidance, wisdom, unity and grace on us all. We rejoice that we belong to one church, one faith, one Lord. In our rejoicing, we bring to you our sorrow and concerns over the various wars and conflicts afflicting the world, which you made and love. The greed, violence and horror which we inflict upon your good world weighs heavily on our hearts. We cry to you for the humble poor of Israel, Palestine and Gaza amid the grief, pain and privation which they face. We ask that you will move the hearts of people in power to seek ways of reconciliation and peace, compassion and respect. We think with horror of the ways in which the Russian invasion of Ukraine has deprived so many of life and livelihoods, homes and hospitals. We pray that you will remove from power the regime in Russia and let the voices of truth and righteousness be heard and followed. Bring a lasting and just peace and spare us from the awfulness of nuclear war in our time. Hear us too as we ask for peace in countries like Sudan, Nigeria and Yemen. We ask that you tend the sick, refresh the weary, sustain the dying, calm the suffering and pity the distressed. And now watch, dear Lord, with those who wake or watch today and let your angels protect those who sleep. All this we ask in the strong name of Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we sing, go and sing our closing hymn.
in heavenly love abiding, number 551. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing God's will, and may the Holy Spirit work in us what is pleasing to God. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. <laughs> 